Good morning, friends, and good morning to those at home on this Thanksgiving Sunday. Watch the choir massing at the back of the church. We have some wonderful music today, a very interesting approach to the homily, and the time of prayer and scripture in each other's presence. Before we begin the liturgy, I ask our senior warden Patrick to come with some important news. I have a note from Paul, he's in our rector, that he's asked that I read at this time to you. Subject line is the rector's body. Fellow friends, I'm very appreciative that the parish gave me leave this past week to visit my father, whose health was ailing. He was ready for my visit. He had difficulty speaking, but could communicate his love. And he could hear me as I spoke with Janet and the girls and our love for him. I prayed with him and read scripture that a few hours after my fourth and final visit to him, he died in the faith. The funeral will be in his home church, Hillside Bible Chapel, Arimbia, Ontario. No date yet because of complications, but perhaps before or after New Year's Day. I'm back in Halifax and have taken up my parish duties in keeping with our other province and return isolation policy. Your pastor, Paul. Staff, as we begin our prayer with in 351.
to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
let us pray. O Almighty and everlasting God, who crown us the year with thy goodness, and has given unto us the fruits of the earth in their season, give us grateful hearts, that we may unfailingly thank thee for all thy loving kindness, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the scriptures. The first lesson is written in Deuteronomy, chapter 8, beginning with the seventh verse. For the Lord your God is bringing you to a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters, welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without sacrosity, where you will lack nothing, and a land of stones whose are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and built the fine houses and lived in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold have multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then you do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint and rock. He fed you into the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and test you, and in the end to, you, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power, the might of my own, and and have given me this, gained me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to you for your ancestors, and he is doing today. Here and next lesson. Springs of dry ground, 
And there he setteth the hungry, that they may build them a city to dwell in, that they may sow their land and plant vineyards to yield them fruits of increase. He blesseth them so that they multiply exceedingly, and suffereth not their cattle to decrease. And again, when they are minished and brought low, through oppression, through any plague or trouble, though he poureth contempt upon princes, and maketh them to wander out of the way in the wilderness, yet helpeth he the poor out of misery, and maketh him households like a flock of sheep. The righteous shall see this and rejoice, and the mouth of all wickedness shall be stopped. Whoso is wise will ponder these things, and they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. The epistle is written in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, beginning at chapter 9, the sixth verse. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, we glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ, and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, but they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Here ended the lesson. Our gradual hymn is number 259. <laughs>
Gospel is written in the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to Luke, beginning at the 11th verse. Glory to you. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When Jesus saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. And then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. And then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where were they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And then Jesus said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have our children with us in the service this morning. But remembering our Lord's saying that you will not enter the kingdom of God unless you become like a little child, I hope that all of you can participate with me in a little bit of an activity for our gospel story today. Thanksgiving, what we're celebrating today, we've heard the collects and readings for Harvest Thanksgiving, the annual celebration where we return thanks to God. It's not so much about what we have, but what God has done for us. And what God has done for us is based on who God is. And so we're going to talk about two stories, and they're both going to come up on the screen, an image at a time. So let's get the first one. What do you see in this picture? What is happening? Who are the people? What do you see here? Just shout it out. Stick up a hand. Do something. Slavery. Slavery is happening. Okay. Yeah. Who, which ones are the slaves? Who do you think? Everybody. Yeah. Sitting down. The ones who are sitting down. Okay. Yeah. Um, where do you think this is happening? Egypt. Egypt. Okay. How can you tell? Anybody? The hats. The hats. Yeah. So you see, you see the, the Egyptian hats up top. The guy with the hat. Well, there are a few guys with a hat. What are they doing? <laughs> well, one of them's writing, so one of them's recording, probably something about the slaves, maybe counting them up, almost like they're cows or something. Um, what about the other one? Yes, I'm hearing a whipping noise. Beating the slaves, right? So these, these aren't Jewish slaves. These are slaves from Africa, further up in Africa. But um, just like... Our ancestors in the faith, the ancient Israelites, these people were in slavery in Egypt. The people sitting on the ground were slaves. What do you think they felt like? <laughs> angry, I'm hearing. Angry, oppressed. Hungry. Despairing. Yeah, they probably don't have a lot of hope. Hungry. Hungry? Yeah, they're probably not being fed very well. They're being treated like cows. Look at that. I'm hungry. Right? Okay. Okay, let's go to the next image. God decided to do something about it. He led his people out of slavery, out of Egypt, and this is their first stop. What is this a picture of? Who's in the picture? What do you think? Camels. Camels are in the picture. Okay, why are the camels in the picture? There's probably also Caravans. people people doing what? Caravans. Caravan, yeah. Riding camels, yes. Riding camels through the desert. When I see this picture, I don't see a lot of green. What's the weather like? Arid. Hot. Hot. Arid. Dry. Arid. Yeah, yeah, arid. Yeah, nothing gross. They're probably still pretty hungry, eh? Yes. So God led his people out of slavery in Egypt, but this is where they stopped. Yeah? Are you talking about manna? 
Well, there's, yeah, there's some manna. So God yeah. provides food in the wilderness, but they don't like it very much. What does it taste like? Honey, apparently, it says. Honey? Um, anyhow, so they're in the, in the desert. They're still hungry. They've been led out of slavery, but this is where they are. Okay, one more image. What's this? What's, what's this? It's a city. Yeah. Describe the city. What's, what's happening in the city? What do you see in the city? Walls and mosques. Walls? Parapets. Yeah. Orchards. Anything else? Mosques. I said that. Couple trees. Couple trees. Wait, that's different than the last picture, isn't it? It's a sign of life. There's life in the city. There's people who are gathered together, living in the same place. They have a community. They have walls that keep them safe. They're still in a desert. It's a city in a desert. But they have security. Comfort. You can only build walls like that if you probably have enough. They're probably not hungry anymore. They probably don't have people who are allowed to beat them indiscriminately anymore. They have a city of their own. This is the city of Jerusalem. So this is the first story. We give thanks not because we have a city. It's not just because we have a city. But because God has brought us into one. Everything that we have has been given. It's not just have. God leads his people out of oppression, out of hunger, out of difficulty, out of despair, hopelessness, into a city of security. And that's what we give thanks for. So that's the first part of our psalm that we heard today. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious, his mercy endureth forever. They that wandered in the wilderness, even in a desert place, found no way to a city where men dwelt. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. He led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city where men dwelt. Oh, that men would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness, and declare the wonders that he doeth for the children of men. Okay, second story. What is this? What's that a picture of? Winter snow. Winter snow. Snow where? Winter where? Wonderland. <laughs> it's a winter wonderland indeed. So what's that? Maybe here? here? Maybe here, yeah, quite possibly. What kind of property do you think this is? Any hints of what kind of property this might be? An orchard, okay, yeah, we see trees. They might be, they're little trees, might be fruit trees. A farm of some sort, yeah, we have little farm buildings over there in the corner. Okay, a farm, an orchard. The job of a farm or an, or an orchard is to grow things, right? Is anything growing? No, it's too cold. Everything's dead. It's a winter wonderland, but nothing is growing. And so what are the people in the house probably feeling? They're warming by the fire? Yeah, there could be some comfort involved in that moment. Stockpiling food from the harvest. Discouraged. Discouraged? They're waiting. They're waiting. Yeah, all those things. They're, depending on what last season was like, they might be very discouraged indeed, but there's certainly expectation. Nothing is going on. They just have to hope. All right, next image. This is also a farm. Tell me about this picture, though. What's what's going on in this part? Yeah. Looks like they don't have a good harvest. Well, it does, looks like they don't have a good harvest. To me, it strikes me as if this is uh, during the season of planting and working, right? You see some farm implements around. But also, do you see any plants? Not yet. They're just tilling the soil. The snow is melted. And what are they doing? Praying. Praying. Why? For what? For the crop. For the crop. There's, so the winter has ended. They can have the hope of a harvest, but there's work ahead. And it's work that they're just they're going to put in with their backs to see their tools. It's sort of hard to see a little bit here. They're going to put in that work with their own bodies, but they're also just going to have to hope and pray. Sometimes the harvest doesn't work out. All right. Final image. What do we have here? What's going on? Eating. Food. Food. Eating. Eat. A lot of pies. Yeah, see this guy right in the front? Yeah? 
Yeah, anything else, not just eating. There's some other hints. What about this guy? Over on the, on the left. So wine, not I'm not right in the corner, but a little bit up. Yes, yeah, kind of be hard, a little hard to see. He's got like a bagpipe or something. There's uh, there's some music going on. Celebration. It's a celebration, right? So people are probably going to be dancing later, right? This is the third part of that story. The world was dead. Nothing was growing. They had to wait through that moment of hope. They had to work through a moment of difficulty and pray through a moment of difficulty. And this is where they end up. Celebrating that God has again brought the world out of cold through a period of growth into a, into a moment of enjoyment. The story of God's people and the story of the harvest are like one another. They're about the same God. The God who blesses people not just by giving, but by drawing people out, drawing people through adversity. And so that's the second part of our psalm that we had sung this morning. A fruitful land maketh he barren. That's the coming of winter. Again, he maketh the wilderness a pool of water and wellsprings of a dry ground. And there he setteth the hungry, that they may build them a city to dwell in, that they may sow their land and plant vineyards to yield them fruits of increase. He blesseth them, so that they multiply exceedingly, and suffereth not their cattle to decrease. We give thanks for what God has done for us. What he's done in the history of his people, which is also our story. How he leads us out of sin into the hope of eternal life. And how in the cosmos, in the whole world around us, he is constantly drawing goodness forth and through difficulty. Oh, that we would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness and declare the wonders that he doeth for the children of man. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Page 71 in your prayer book, please stand as we say together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father through all worlds, God of God, light of God. Invite the congregation at home to stay with us through the offertory hymn, and then we shall give you blessings, and I wish you now a happy and blessed Thanksgiving Day. Our offertory hymn is number 262. 